Hey you guys, it's your girl Princess T. How's everybody doing today? So today I wanted to talk to you guys about something so serious and close to me and dear to my heart and it is hair color. Um, I have been light brown. I have been almost platinum blonde. I love hair color. I'm a hair colorist. Um, that is one of my favorite things to do. But a lot of people have problems with keeping up with their hair color. And that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to make it not only for the client, but also for anybody. Anybody who's using color. Because color is such a serious thing. Um, you know, you have to know what you're getting into if you're going into it. And that's just something that all of us need to be aware of. So, the first things first, I want to say to everyone. If you don't color your hair at home, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, because box color is by far the worst thing you can put on your hair. The, the worst thing you can do. So do not take that five minutes in Walmart and go grab the $5 box color and just slap it on your roots and keep it moving. Like, oh, I'm going to cover these grays and I'm going to be good. No, <laughs> no, no, no. With box color, there is pigments and lord knows what in them that will attach themselves to your hair and will not come out basically which is where you get into having to go to a salon if it doesn't come out the color you want and having it corrected um when you go to the salon and have a your color corrected it can cost you anywhere between 150 to like 500 dollars because it just depends on how different you want your hair and how much the salon can do or the stylist can do to help get you there without damaging your hair which may mean maybe one visit or over time you have to gradually get there because no stylist wants to burn your hair off as much as you think they do they don't <laughs> if you've ever had an experience i am so sorry Sorry for you it is not a pleasant experience but you know you still have the stylist that's going to take care of you that's going to give you what you need and help you personally so please no box color first off that's the first that's my first thing because it'll cost you so much less money in the long run if you just go get it done professionally because if you end up not liking it I've heard horror stories I kid you not I'm not lying <laughs> at all i've heard horror stories of a client going to walmart and they're like oh my roots are my roots are done you know my roots are messed up and you know they're grown now i'm gonna go get me a five dollar box box color to wait it out until my until i can get to the salon well the thing is is when you do that you don't know what's in the box because apparently there's people who are mean and hateful and will switch the colors in the box. I've had people come to me that have blonde hair and have used a box color just to fill in their roots, you know, to make them a little lighter and their hair be black. And that is no good. So you always have to be careful about what you're using on your hair. Um, a lot of people that I know that use box color, their hair is dry, it's not shiny, it's like you know it's just all over not at its best quality okay so I'm gonna break it down to you guys in different sets of colors so blondes reds browns and like medium browns and fantasy colors so first off I'm gonna start with blondes so blondes have more fun we all know it but blonde is a lot of maintenance if you are thinking about doing blonde and you want to be blonde, that is great. I love blonde. Blonde's my favorite color. I used to be blonde. But you always want to make sure you're taking care of it. Because with turning your hair blonde, you are lifting the color out of the hair and making it lighter. Which in any case is breaking down the bond of the hair. Not to necessarily damage it, but with any color comes a little bit of damage. So you can't, you know, it's, I'm not saying your hair is supposed to fall off when you get highlights. That's not it at all. Your hair should not fall off. But because you are altering the natural state of the hair, it will be altered. So what you want to do is you always want to make sure that you are following your stylist um, and having them help you take care of your hair, whether it be inside of the salon or outside of the salon. Inside of the salon, you can always come and get a gloss, maybe to brighten up your blonde in between colors. You can always come get a conditioning treatment. I'm sure your stylist has a conditioning treatment that they would love to give you in between colors or maybe when you get a color. And so you always wanna make sure that you are buying the products that your 
Silas recommends. Now, I know that the salon products are pricier. I get it. I completely understand working on a budget, not wanting to spend all this money on salon products. You're thinking like, oh, they're trying to sell me this $20 shampoo because they get $20 extra if I buy it. No, that is not the case. I wish I made $20 off of a bottle of shampoo that I sell people. Um, typically, the average stylist makes about between $2 and $4 on a $20 shampoo that they sell you. So they're not selling it to you because they are out to get all your money and everything like that. You gotta think, you are paying $75 to $160 for a head of highlights and you don't want to go and use drugstore shampoo and conditioner on it because drugstore shampoo and conditioner are made for box color which is also bad so then you have bad shampoos and conditioners um it's just not the best for the hair the best thing to use if you're not wanting brassiness in your hair which is that orange hue you get in your highlights you want to use purple shampoo purple shampoo is really purple like it's for real purple it's not like I'm just calling it purple shampoo it's like when you pour it in your hand like you look like a blueberry exploded on you and you're all blue and purple and everything like that and the reason why that is is because on the color wheel which is how we gauge how we color your hair and how we do your hair yellow is canceled out by purple because they're on the opposite side of the color wheel so with that being said, if you're seeing yellow or orange in your hair, you're going to put purple on it. And that purple is going to help to keep your hair looking as bright as it can be and all that type of thing. You want to make sure that you're doing a conditioning treatment, like I said, because your, your stylist will know that you need if you need a conditioning treatment, especially if you're going blonde. Um, that's just a given because you are lightening the hair it is changing the texture of the hair altering the hair and it just to ensure that you have beautiful healthy hair you would want to take all the precautionary steps to keep it go second off let's do reds red is a very committed color also if you are blonde, do not go red. No, you can go red, but you will not be blonde for a long time. Um, red is absolutely like what we try to get out of your hair when you turn we turn you blonde. So all the stuff that we we take out to make you blonde, we have to put back in to make you red. So a lot of people get confused. They're like, oh, I'm just gonna color my hair red, then I'm gonna color it blonde, and it does not work like that. Um, so red is a beautiful color. I love reds. I've personally never been red, but I love reds. They are beautiful. They're rich. They're warm. They're everything that you could think of if you're Ariel or whoever you are. <laughs> so with red comes maintenance. Not only for your roots, you'll have to maintain it, but also for your color. Red is not a natural color, whether you're getting a coppery red or a aerial red. It's really not too natural for the hair to be that red. So what you're going to run into when you're doing red color is it fading. Your hair color is going to fade. And I know you've seen somebody whose hair was all rich and red and then now it's like this weird like orangey pinky red. Like It's just because the color is not an absolute color so it's not going to stay in the hair as long. Um, to prolong reds, you always want to make sure you're buying the shampoo and conditioner that your stylist suggests to you. Maybe they have a color lock um, spray or a color lock um, cream that they can suggest to you. Most of the time there's not typically like a red shampoo and I think there might be at like Sally's or something. I do not advise to use it because it may not be the same red that you are using that your stylist is using on your hair. So it could turn out really bad. Also, it could not come out your hair when they try to take it out if you wanna go back a different color. So you always want to make sure that you are using shampoo and conditioner that they suggest. Most likely it'll be a color care shampoo and conditioner because color care kinda, of, you know, is extra color care basically because all shampoos and conditioner that most salons sell are color safe. Um, they don't have sulfates in them or some of them don't have parabens and things like that. So you should be good across the board shampoo and conditioner. And I don't know if I already hit on this or not, but when a stylist 
sells you a shampoo, they're not selling you a shampoo to make bukus of money off of you. If they're selling you a $20 shampoo, they're getting between 2 and $4. And, you know, they're selling it to you because they know that it's good for your hair. Um, a bottle of salon shampoo should last you between six to eight months, honestly. Um, it really just depends on how you use it. I have a lot of hair. If I use professional products, I use just a little bit, like maybe like a nickel dime size. And with the shampoo, you want to put it in your hair, add water, and it'll lather up. It's very, very concentrated, so it's not like the regular shampoo and conditioner you get at Walgreens because that has lot water already in it. With the professional products, you have to add water into it to make it suds, to make it spread. Um, and that's where a lot of people get, they're like, I bought this bottle of shampoo and it lasted me the same amount. It should not. It should last you far longer. Because when before I started using professional pro products, I could go through a bottle of shampoo in like a month. And you got to think, if you're using a $3, $4 shampoo a month, times that by six months, you're going to pay the same amount that you would pay for the professional product. So it's just kind of, you got to weigh your pros and cons and remember that your stylist is really looking out for you in the long run browns brown hair a lot of people come to me and they have a problem with dullness um, if your hair is brown it's beautiful beautiful is brown but sometimes it lacks that luster and that shine effect so if it that is the case then you want to ask your stylist about a gloss maybe something for shine maybe a product um, something of, to that extent with brown hair, if you're coloring it brown, then you might want to get a color safe shampoo, a color care shampoo. And if not, then your stylist can point you to whatever she thinks you need. If you have thinner hair and you want to be thicker, well, it appear thicker, you can use a thickener shampoo and conditioner that's color safe too. So you just really have to talk to your stylist and make sure that you guys are on the same page. Um, light brown, same thing. Um, they pretty much fall in the same category. So you always want to make sure that you're using the products that your salon suggests for you. And then you should be good. Um, last but not least, fantasy colors. Everybody wants to be the tumbler colors, that pastel pink, that silver, that black to silver, um, the the turquoise I know you love those colors they're the best but with those colors comes so much time money and maintenance so before you think like I'm gonna go to the salon today and I'm gonna get my hair turned white and then fade into baby pink that's probably not the logical thing behind it um, most of the time fantasy colors take anywhere between two and six hours because you have to lighten the hair. It is a double process, which means that you have to lighten the hair, you have to dry the hair, you have to put more color on the hair, and then you have to dry the hair. If not more, it, depending on what you're getting and depending on how high, how light your hair gets, how fast. Most of the time, when you come back in, it's faded because it is a fantasy color. You have lifted all the pigment out of the hair to put this pretty pink in it, and it has nothing to grab onto. And with that being said, with it having nothing to grab onto, it fades faster, especially, like I said, the reds. It's not a natural color, so it fades faster. So a lot of people come in, they want that fantasy color, they wanna be pink. Then two, three weeks in, maybe a couple shampoos in, it starts to fade, and they're like, oh, my hair's fading. But that's just something that comes with that fantasy color. So you really have to be committed if you're gonna do it, or you're gonna just, you know you're gonna see it fade and then you're gonna see it look crazy I know you've seen people with like green hair and then it fades and it's like this muddy weird color or they had blue hair and it faded and now they have like light blue hair and it's all that it's just because it's not going to stay on the hair because it is not a natural color and also with fantasy colors it will take a long time and it will be more work and it will cost you more money so you can't go in hoping to be a pink and pay a hundred dollars because it does not work that way if you find somebody who does it for a hundred dollars then I'm not sure your hair will be pink when you leave but <laughs> hey <laughs> all right so before I go I just wanted to give a little bonus on why color is so expensive um, with each colorist, it's going to be a different price. Not across the board, you can get this for $100 or this for $50 or this for $25. It really just depends on the stylist and how comfortable they are with their work and how 
much training they had and how much they want to charge. So, especially if you're like, want good quality for cheap, it's probably not going to be the best. So you always want to, if you see a picture on Instagram or a picture on Twitter or a picture on Facebook and you're like, I want my hair to look like that. You always want to call around and get quotes. Um, some might, some people might be cheaper than others, but the quality might not be as good. But it all just depends on the stylist. So I'm not saying that anybody who charges less is going to be not as good as a stylist. It just depends on the person and their preference. So with that being said, I want to say thank you so much for watching my video. Um, I hope that my tips and tricks helped. Um, I am a stylist. I love color. I love being here for my clients and for my viewers and I just it's just great to be able to talk to you guys and share these things that I try to relate to my clients and just be able to share it with all of you guys so with with all that I just want to say if you need if you want me to answer anything else um, that is salon related or anything for that matter pertaining to hair skincare um, nails kind of thing um, you can just leave a comment below and I will try to answer it or make another video with like a Q&A so that everybody gets their questions answered eventually but um, I feel like this was a very informative video I hope that it helped you um, and I hope that when you color your hair you go get it done professionally and help support the hair industry and the beauty industry make sure that if you are going to a stylist in a salon a lot of times they are going to try to help you with your beauty budget if you go into a salon and tell them hey i have 80 dollars today that i can spend on my hair i want to be lighter all over what can i how can we get there and i'm sure that the stylist with that will be more than happy to help you or help you to find somebody that can help you even if you're paying the eighty dollars you may not get the complete blonde that you want today but I'm sure that over time they can help you gradually get there so you just have to make sure that you're asking questions and you know you always want to you know make sure that your stylist teaches you because if your stylist doesn't teach you then how are you supposed to know what you're doing um, and that's just one thing I try to walk my clients through and ask them questions and what they want to know and if they need help styling their hair they can always come back and I can help them we can set up a time where I can help them if I've curled their hair a certain way and they don't know how to do it I'll tell them to come back if they didn't have trouble and I will help them figure it out so things like that so I hope you guys enjoyed it rate comment and subscribe I'm trying to do better with my videos every Wednesday um, I'm gonna do a giveaway so make sure that you're subscribing so that you can be part of the giveaway um, and thank you royal family don't forget to rate comment subscribe bye